A federal court overturned Alabama's revised congressional map on Tuesday. This comes after state lawmakers were told to redraw the map because the original one violated the Voting Rights Act of 1965. Joining us now live over Zoom is Alabama Policy Director for the Southern Poverty Law Center, Jerome Dees. And Jerome, what is your reaction to the judge's ruling? Um, well, we're in the middle of football season, so I, I think of it in terms of this. When the ball is placed at the one yard line and it's fourth and goal, you know what to do. You run the ball to push it across the goal line. And when you don't do that and you get stopped, no one is surprised at the outcome. Uh, similarly, with this case, the Supreme Court over the course of this summer and this same federal district court two years ago told the state legislature exactly what they expected from them. And so during the special session uh, in July, when the state legislature did not do that, none of us should be surprised uh, at the outcome uh, of what the court's decision was. Jerome, a special master will now redraw this map. What do you want to see when the new map is drawn? Uh, my hope is that the special master and the cartographer assigned to the special master will do exactly uh, what the court laid out for them to do uh, in their initial uh, preliminary injunction dating back to 2022 uh, and follow uh, what the guidelines are that the Supreme Court said, which is creating that second majority minority district. It should be plain and simple, uh, straightforward uh, progress. And we do know this may not be in effect for a while. The state is expected to appeal the two SCOTUS. Are you worried about any upcoming election? Uh, I'm concerned, uh, not necessarily about the outcome, but the effect that will have on the state of Alabama and Alabama's voters. Uh, the primary election is right around the corner in March. We're only six months uh, away from that. And so the longer that uh, the state attorney general's office drags uh, this process out, uh, the more of an impact that it has on voters and the ability for them to get to know the candidates that will ultimately be representing them. On top of just the untold cost of litigation that's ultimately going to be borne by the taxpayers uh, of the state. And so that's really uh, my greatest concern, the impact that it will have on Alabama voters. For those appealing, for those who say the maps are good the way they are, what is your reaction to that? Uh, well, over the course of uh, this summer, the Southern Poverty Law Center uh, released a report, the Shelby Report, which uh, was on the 10-year anniversary of the Shelby v. Holder decision. And it lays out uh, just the breadth of uh, voter suppression laws that have been enacted, not only here in the state of Alabama, but across the South. Uh, across the entire country, uh, there were over 74 redistricting lawsuits in 27 states that detail uh, all of the different ways that maps similar to the ones that we saw passed in 2021, uh, as well as in the 23 special session, uh, have a discriminatory impact on voters. And so the whole reason uh, for the Milligan case was to try to allow voters to have fair and just representation. Uh, and so uh, my response to that would be, there is a reason that we have gone through this process, uh, that Alabamians and particularly black Alabamians and voters of color uh, deserve uh, that second seat and that fair representation in Congress. Jerome, anything else you wanna say about yesterday's ruling? Uh, nothing uh, other than uh, this is exactly uh, what the Constitution uh, states needed to happen. So again, uh, none of us who follow the law have followed this case since its inception uh, are shocked at all uh, in the legal reasoning that the court uh, shared with us yesterday. All right, Jerome, thanks so much for joining us here on Alabama Live. We appreciate it. Thank you.